Welcome to the Garden of Favor podcast, where we are committed to cultivating lives and businesses God's way. Because when we do, we see the evidence of his favor. I'm warning you now, be prepared. You might cry a little bit and you might be tempted to shout a couple yeses and amens as we ask ourselves the tough questions and get honest with God about what he wants to do in us and through us for the kingdom. Hey, sister friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned six-figure corporate exec, Turn top 1% network marketer, turn dream job, live in my best life as a mindset strategist and kingdom blueprints coach for Christian entrepreneurs. I believe your life is like a garden and your business plays a major role in fulfilling your purpose and calling. Are you ready to get your mindset and heart set in sync with the father so you can bloom into all he's created you to be? Then let's grow girl. Hey, sister friend, can you believe that we are already in the second month of 2022? My goodness, time goes so fast. So I wanted to do a check-in. As you know, I shared with all of you in the beginning of the year, a chronological Bible in a year reading plan. Whether you're following this one or not, I want to encourage you that the way that you're going to experience the most growth in your life, in your marriage, in your business, as as a mother, as whatever it is that you're doing, is going to be through your relationship with Jesus. And the best way to grow a relationship with somebody is to spend time with them. So if you're behind on the reading plan, there is no shame. If you haven't started or if you are doing something else, I want to do a little mini check-in and encourage you, this is the best thing you can do. Above anything else for your business, buying a course, investing in a coach, whatever it is to get into the word of God, pray, talk to the Lord, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you things to you that you personally need. And so I want to encourage you. With that being said, I've been creating my goals over here and I'm a little behind the eight ball if you think of, you know, all of our goals being ready to do in 2021 in January. And my beginning of the year, I shared with you in an earlier episode, it started off a little bit wonky. I had a really rough start. Listen, I am over here breaking down generational curses and the devil and the kingdom of darkness is angry. And so I have been experiencing some spiritual warfare, but I'm here for it. I am here for it. With that being said... One of the goals as I was sitting and, and asking the Lord, you know, like, what what do you want me to do? And I, I've talked a lot with women about setting goals with God. In fact, in the Made to Flow Academy, that's what we're doing right now. We just went through the, uh, the, the week lesson of identifying your goals and identifying your God goals. And oftentimes it really surprises women, the things that they come in wanting to do, uh, what comes out when they spend time with the Lord is, is a little different. But what I always encourage women to do is follow whatever God says, because I promise you, when you seek first, everything else falls into place. And so sometimes it's those goals that we don't really think matter. I call them the, like, go-to goals are the ones we love, the ones that we find to be really fun. And oftentimes as driven, ambitious entrepreneurs, we make it our business. And God's like, hey, you know, your health's over here struggling, or maybe your marriage is struggling, or maybe your finances are struggling. And those aren't always like the fun, sexy goals to work on. But when we do what the Lord is asking us to do, then we get it all. So with that being said, I was creating my goals and I'm like, you know what? I want a thousand women. I want to work with a thousand women who are in the word every day. I want to get a thousand women in the word every day. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a book, a chapter, a verse, but I know from my own personal life, that the thing that has changed my life the most is getting into the word of God and spending time with the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me and teach me, refine me and convict me, show me what it is that I need in this season. So I thought it'd be a really good idea. You know, I share a lot that I used to get the message in my inbox all the time. What's the best book to read for this? Well, now my, my questions are, hey, what's the best Bible study? Or what's the best devotional? And it got me to thinking that, you know, in my Christian walk, I used to think, uh, you know, Obviously, I've always been told to read the Bible, but I always struggle with it. You guys know that. I have a Flourish Your Faith workshop, which is really helping you understand, like, how do you pray? How do you read your Bible? How do you hear from God? And really simplifying it, like kindergarten level, because we overcomplicate things. 
With that being said, uh, the Lord has just continued to grow me. The more I spend time with him, right? The more I trust him, the more our deeper our relationship gets, the more I, I come to know who he is, his character and his nature, and the more he like we reciprocate this, this relationship. It's just like any other relationship here on earth. With that being said, I used to, you know, spend, you know, 10 ish minutes in the morning doing devotions. <clears throat> if that is you, there is no shame in that. I'm so proud of you. That's getting into the word of God. Like, right. That is, but I want to explain to you, what the Lord has given me some revelation on the difference between Bible studies and devotionals. Because a lot of the times I get women to come to me and say, hey, what's the best devotional? Like, would you have any recommendations? I'm like, yes, but are you, I just want to clarify. And I often will say, I'm clarifying. Do you want a devotional or do you want a Bible study? And so I wanted to just give you what the Lord has showed me uh, over time, the difference between the two and why we need both. Okay, so what is a devotional? A devotional is really typically uh, a verse or a small passage and it's somebody else's interpretation of that and I don't necessarily mean interpretation um, theologically I mean personally usually what a devotional is 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 a passage taken and then somebody writes you know a, a one pager about it and I think that's awesome we can learn so much from each other um What I see more of a Bible study being is taking scripture and diving into it, learning what does God mean by this, taking into context, like what what is the context behind this verse? Perhaps who wrote it? When was it written? Who was it written to? And so it's a little bit more of a treasure hunt kind of an experience. And what I find is that Bible studies allow us to have our own interpretation of God's word for us through revelation of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm treading lightly here because um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to misrepresent what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the Holy Spirit, I always pray, Holy Spirit, show me what you want to show me today. Because what I find is I can read Matthew, you know, chapter one, verse five today and get something from it. But, you know, two years from now or five years from now or 10 years from now, I can see things that I never saw. I've shared with you before, sometimes I know people who study like one verse or one chapter for a month straight, and the Lord continues to give them deeper understanding, deeper revelation. And so what the biggest difference between Bible studies and devotionals? Devotionals are somebody else's interpretation of it, somebody else's story that goes along with it, somebody else's encouragement. And again, not that that's a bad thing, but God wants to have time with you. And I think about it this way, in a relationship, if you, you know, just watched somebody have a date versus you being on the date, it's totally different, right? So to me, it's like a devotional, not saying that God can't speak to you through a devotional because the Lord has used many devotionals to speak to me. And really, that's how I spent majority of my Christian walk until about 2018 when I said, you know what? I am getting into the word and I'm spending so much time with the Lord. And so through my healing journey, A lot of you know my story. I had to lose it all to find Jesus is all. I found Jesus is all in his presence. And part of that was in getting into God's word. And so what the phrase God gave me, and I hope you um, get this, like devotionals are like a $5 fill up. I often refer to them as that. And what do I mean by that? Well, have you ever gone to the gas station and either one of two scenarios, one, you don't have enough time to fill up your entire tank. You are running late and you don't have enough time and you can only get $5. Because that's just what you need to get to your appointment to be there on time and you're it's better than nothing because you absolutely need it. That's a lot of times it's like a devotional. We need it and we know it, but we don't make the time to actually go deeper, to spend more time. And so what happens? Well, we fill up with the five dollars and it only gets us so far. We can only get so many miles in that five dollars. And goodness gracious, nowadays it's like that's barely two, I don't even think it wouldn't even be two gallons of gas. And so how many miles per gallon does your car take? Well, your spirit and your energy and your heart, right? Everything that it takes you to get through the day, you're going to have to go back and fill up. And let's be honest, how often do you, most of us wrestle with finding one 
good chunk of time to spend with the Lord, let alone two, three, four, five, just to keep getting to the next destination. Whereas when we spend time with the Lord, more than that five minutes of reading that one, you know, that one inspirational verse, which is still good and reading somebody else's quick interpretation of that and their word of encouragement for today. But when we actually spend more time with the Lord and we carve out time to spend quality time with him so that we can actually fill up our whole tank. We then have the energy and the wisdom and the we're filled with fruit of the spirit. And we can go through our whole day. So it's like filling up our entire tank. I am so visual. So I hope this speaks to you because the Lord was like, Heather, there's nothing wrong with the $5 fill up, but I have so much more for you and your tank can hold so much more. If you start studying scripture and you actually start opening up the word so that you can start underlining, highlighting, diving into context, diving into the different commentaries. And again, I don't want to make this religious, like you have to do this in order to, to, to hear from God or you, no, I just know that in my own personal walk, you know, there were seasons in my life that devotionals, that was it. Like, that's what I got. That's what I gave. And that did keep me going. But once I started to dive into actually studying God's word and diving into more of the, you know, my, it, but this could either sound really exciting to you or it could sound like, oh. But I want to encourage you again, we get to study the love letter that God wrote for us. It's not a have to, it's not a need to, it's not a should, it's not a must. It's a we get to, we can, we choose to, we want to. That one flip of the switch changes everything. In my season of deep, deep, deep healing, um, getting, going through the stages of grief, I would find myself studying the Bible for, you know, like two plus hours. I'm not saying you have to do that. And that doesn't make me any better of a person. But the Lord just, it so happened in that season of my life, the Lord just made a way for me to be able to do that. And in that season, you know, I felt like from a logical perspective, I'm like, man, I am not doing anything. And if my husband, I I even felt guilty. I was like, if my husband only knew I'm literally just up here reading the Bible and studying things and researching things like, Oh my gosh, he'd be disappointed in me thinking I'm not doing anything. Oh man, how the enemy can just try to like get into our mind and plant seeds of doubt and lies. And so the Lord just told me, no, Heather, like I've given you this space and he still provided financially, even though I wasn't like working my business, I was totally working the soil of my heart. So I want to encourage you that if you have been um, one of those people like I have spending, you know, just buying the devotional, maybe it's Jesus Calling or, you know, some, uh, actually one of my clients just sent me this awesome 100 days of believing bigger. I, my word for 2022 is believe and uh, Amanda is her name. Thank you, Amanda, for my kind devotional. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. At the same time, I'm not doing this alone. I'm also adding in the chronological Bible in a year. And again, it's not about you have to read the entire Bible in a year in order to get something from God. Like you could study Genesis for the entire year and the Lord will give you so much. So it's not about quantity, but it's about quality. And more than anything, it's about quality time. So I want to encourage you, if you feel like you've been running on empty and you're constantly feeling like it's just not enough, right? It's just like, man, that that $5 fill up makes sense. I want to encourage you to go to sleep earlier so that you can wake up earlier or look at your time and how much time are you scrolling social media? How much time are you actually spending doing other things that you really do have more time than a quick Devo? Nothing wrong with the Devo. Keep the Devos. Keep the devotionals. But add in some actual meaty Bible study. And it also brings me to that verse, right? Where it talks about, um, you know, the the people being, they only drink milk, right? A devotional is kind of like milk. It's good. It's easy to consume. And it's still really good for you. In fact, milk is is, is a necessity for babies, right? Um, I was a big breastfeeding mama. Um, I'm a huge advocate for that. And so I... Like my kids needed that. I was able to supply them with nutrition, but eventually it changes from milk to meat. 
And as a Christian, as a believer, as, as, a, as a Christ follower, we should naturally, just like our babies do, go from the formula or the breast milk, right? We should go from milk to meat, which brings me to my another analogy that the Lord had given me about mama birds, right? Mama birds, they go to the, they fly to the nest and they chew up their food and they spit it out into their baby's mouths. That gets the baby to grow. And so there is no shame in that. This is, this episode is not to shame you. I just want to give you a different perspective of God has so much more for you. Have you ever juiced? So one year, George and I were like, we're going to juice. We watched the documentary, um, I think it was like fat, sick, and nearly dead, something like that. And this guy ended up going on this juice fast and lost a ton of weight, got super healthy. And we were like, we're going to do that. That'd be awesome. You know, even if we just did one juice a day. Well, let me tell you, first of all, if any of you have juiced, you know how much food it takes to get like one cup of juice. Holy moly. Um, they're so, they're, it's so good to juice, but we don't really do it anymore. But the Lord like showed me, man, I'm like, you know, this juicing's good, but I kind of want to just chew on an apple. And add some peanut butter on it because that's my favorite. I think devotionals and Bible studies are very similar. It's like that mama bird that's like chewing up that food or that juicing that it's just kind of like it's already mushed for you. It's still good. It still has a ton of nutrition. It's still great for you. But there is nothing like chewing on your own food. There is nothing like using your molars to like, like, you know, just to digest this food. And so I think it does it even liquid is different in our digestion than the hard stuff. And so that's really what I look at devotionals and Bible studies like. So I want to encourage you. God wants to speak to you specifically for you and your season. And as much as you can listen to a podcast or a devotional or read somebody's book or listen to a pastor on YouTube or Instagram or wherever, all of those things are really good. I want to encourage you to keep doing that. I learn in those ways as well. But nothing will replace a personal relationship with the Lord. Nothing will replace a personal connection with the Holy Spirit as you read God's word. And what happens, man, when the Holy Spirit gives me a message that's just for me, it hits a little different. It sticks a little deeper and it is like chewing on it. And guess what? I digest it differently and it stays with me longer because truth be told, let me just challenge you because I realize this too, right? I read the Devo. I feel really good for five minutes. I'm like, that is so good. But I can tell you how many times at the end of the day, I could not even tell you what the verse was or the story for the day. But when I spend time with the Lord and the Holy Spirit gives me fresh revelation for myself, takes me into deeper understanding, takes me deeper into the word and speaks to me so personally, man, I can remember that for years, years, just like this lesson right here, right? The $5 Philip. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, if you're on your walk, God is so proud of you. God loves spending time with you. The angels are cheering. I am cheering. I'm so proud of you. Your kids are going to start to notice a difference. Your wife, well, not your wife, your husband's going to start to notice a difference. Your friends are going to start to notice a difference. You're going to start to notice a difference. And the deeper that relationship is with the Lord, the more you're going to become changed because you can't help it. When you experience the love of God, you can't help but be transformed. And guess what? Transformed people transform people. That is my heart to help you transform your heart and your mind so that you can go out and impact your your customers, your family, your church, your neighborhood, whatever spheres and whatever environments God has called you to, transformed people transform people. When you are transformed by the love of God, you will then go and do that to other people. So I want to encourage you today, you're doing a great job. What you're doing now is wonderful. If you can, if you haven't been doing more Bible studies, I want to encourage you not to be intimidated by the word of God. There's so much goodness in there. And even as me, like, listen, I am not a theologian. And that has been something that has held me back from even trying to talk about this stuff to y'all because I'm like, oh, I don't feel qualified. Maybe I need to go to seminary. Maybe I need to go back to college. Maybe I need to go and get some sort of, you know, certification or degree. And God's like, no, no. 
The disciples didn't do that. They just followed Jesus. And so I'm following Jesus, being more dedicated to my time, spending with him, making sure, you know, like my workout doesn't last longer than my quiet time with the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, conviction for me. He's like, Heather, you'll go to the gym and work out for an hour, but you can't make time for me. Okay. I'm going to give you this one more like Holy Spirit drop because, uh, last week in the made to flow Academy group coaching call, all oh, the spirit was just like flowing and women were getting such deep revelation and understanding of like what is actually in their subconscious, what's actually holding them back. What lies are they believing? And one of the things that came out of it is like, you know, so one of our basic needs is to feel worthy. And, uh, when we don't feel valued, we don't feel worthy. We question it. We're like, Oh, am I even like good enough to do this? Am I even Will people find this valuable? Will people even think that I, I have anything to teach them, right? In business, we can definitely get into that um, imposter syndrome. With that being said, I just felt like the Lord was saying, you all are questioning if you're worthy, but I am asking you, do you think I'm worthy? Because you're not giving me your time. You're not giving me your attention. You're not giving me your heart. You're not giving me your focus. And so you're, you know, weak sometimes can ask God, like, show us that we're worthy. And he's like, girl, Show me that I'm worthy because God is so worthy of our time. He is so worthy. What is the, you know, better, better one day in his presence than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in the presence of God than a thousand days on a stage, on vacation, a somewhere like, like, this is so encouraging for me too, friends. Like I, there is no, when I speak to you all about these tough issues, it's because the Lord is shaking me up. It's because the Lord is showing me where I have got off track, where I have not kept him first, when I have not, you know, and again, there's no shame in this. The enemy wants to shame us, wants to condemn us, but it's the Holy Spirit convicting. So I pray, um, if this is convicting to you, what do we do when that happens? Well, we repent. We ask for forgiveness and we change. Like repent means to turn away from, to do differently. So I want to encourage you in your heart today. You're doing a great job. If you're giving God your time, you're doing a great job. But the more you give him, the more he is going to speak to you. The closer you're going to feel with him. So as we are entering into the second month of the 2022 year, I hope this encourages you. And I hope if you... Um, you know, if you've been reading the Bible plan, please tag me in it. Tell me what God is showing you. Share with the world. Be a devotional for those other people who are not spending time in the word, right? Be a devotional for other people. Those are good. I want to write a devotional someday, but I certainly don't want somebody to replace that with actually getting into the word of God themselves and studying the Bible. So let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love letter to us. We thank you for speaking to us through your word, that your word is alive and active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, help us. Help us to not believe the lies of the enemy. The enemy knows the word better than we do. And so, Lord, let us learn the word better than he does so that we can use it against him. So, Father, I pray for the women that are hearing this, that they are being convicted. Lord, there is no shame, no guilt, no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. So this is not an episode to shame anybody who is, uh, who's been spending time doing devotionals. In fact, I want to encourage them and cheer them on. But, Lord, you're just showing them that you love them so much that you want to spend more time with them. So Holy Spirit, I ask you just come into the presence of this woman and I pray that you just show her how much you love her and how much you desire to spend more time with her and that the devotionals have been so good and you're so proud of her, but you want her to go deeper because when we go deeper, there's the beauty. It's like when we go snorkeling, right? When we go under the water, we go scuba diving, we get to see the deeper parts of the beauty of what you have created for us. So God, we thank you for that. We thank you for wanting to spend time with us and we just praise you for who you are. So Father, I just thank you in advance for the thousand women who are going to spend time in your presence daily studying your love letter. I just thank you for them and I can't wait to see the fruit of it. We ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Hey friend, before I let you go, I want to hear from you. I would love for you to send me a message on Instagram, on Facebook, or in our Facebook group. I'll link all of those things below. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if I can support you in any way of going deeper with the Lord while continuing to 
fulfill your calling, keeping him first, I want to know how I can support you. So send me a message, send me an email, send me a message on Facebook and come join me and thousands of other women in our community so that we can support each other. I'll see you on social media.